On the Indian border, in the south of Nepal, is the country's oldest animal reserve, the Royal Chitwan Park. Along with the extremely rare Indian rhinoceros, around 400 animals live within the confines of this fascinating nature reserve. The fertile valley is crossed by the rivers Rapti, Rayu and Narayani. Because of the heavy rainfall of the monsoons, the rivers frequently change course and constantly transform the appearance of the landscape. These rivers are home to a large assortment of fish. Even the rare Ganges dolphin that is threatened by extinction has found sanctuary in their waters. An area of 932 square kilometers is encircled by the impressive profile of the mighty and majestic Himalayan mountains. In 1973, the park was officially designated as a national park. Today, it is one of the country's most important tourist destinations. The tall forests of Sal and the vast areas of land covered with elephant grass are an ideal environment for a variety of mammals and several species of birds. The few lodges that are situated within the National Park are of a good standard and well organised. Visitors are provided with all the necessary information to choose from a selection of excursions and leisure activities. High temperatures and great humidity are the ideal ingredients for the proliferation of this region's numerous tropical plants. A jungle walk should only be undertaken with an experienced guide. They can advise on the dangers of the jungle and help to keep its visitors safe and sound. Here, the sal tree is prolific. A magnificent straight hardwood tree that can grow up to 40 meters high. One day we call Calera dinner of Discoso. tree-covered hills of the park, there is a rainforest, part of which is under official supervision. During the dry season, the trees lose their leaves, thus allowing more light to shine onto the grassy jungle terrain.
More than 70% of the Royal Chitwan National Park is covered by forests of sal trees, the remainder being divided between river valley woodland and tall elephant grass. With its 80 metre high hills, the park accommodates more than 40 species of mammals, around 550 varieties of birds and 70 species of butterflies. Subtropical climate also supports the growth of numerous exotic plants, the magnificent blossoms of which are often obscured by dense undergrowth. Chitwan means heart of the jungle, a name that could not better describe the large variety of fauna and flora to be found here. Originally, this nature reserve was the regal hunting ground of the Rana monarchs. However, in 1950, the rhinoceros was extensively hunted by poachers. Since 1962, the military has been given the responsibility of protecting the endangered pachyderms. The soldiers are permitted to shoot poachers who, if they are caught, can also face up to 25 years of imprisonment. Gigantic sal trees unite with the parasitic plants and climbers that embrace them elegantly yet threateningly. Chitwan is the most well-maintained section of a belt of marshland and jungle that once covered the entire south of Nepal. Lying at the foot of the massive Himalayas, this lowland is well supplied with both surface and ground water. Watching heat favours the creation of new life, contains the further encroachment of the forest and ensures the survival of the open grassland.
Towering above, the dense leaves of the trees seem to unite into a huge ceiling of luscious green. Only the occasional sunbeam finds its way through this evergreen protective layer. water ponds that steam in the heat of the sun. There is often a collection of wild boars, muntjac stags and rhesus monkeys. Chitwan National Park also boasts an animal that is an important source of labor on the Asian continent, the Indian elephant. In contrast to their African counterpart, the Indian elephant is frequently used for a variety of practical duties. In the park, the most important task of this noble pachyderm is to transport both guards and visitors through the jungle. Indeed, one of the most impressive events during a stay in the National Park is by way of a safari on the back of an elephant. And it's none too easy to mount these three meter high giants of the jungle. And climbing into their special saddles is a daunting task. The immense strength of these animals is able to carry not only a guide, but also four additional passengers in a unique saddle designed specially for their broad backs. Each of the passengers is seated and after a final check of the seat belts, the adventurous elephant safari can begin. It doesn't take long to grow accustomed to this new mode of transport and the strangely swinging gait of the elephant. It's a wonderful way to enjoy the scenery. By 
applying gentle pressure with their bare feet, the guides control the obedient elephants with unbelievable precision. slow journey through the jungle provides the pachyderms with the opportunity to refresh themselves with fresh and juicy young plants. The crossing of creeks and rivers presents no problem for these creatures. In spite of their gigantic size and weight, the elephants are amazingly deft of foot. The elephant safari through the jungle also has the advantage that wild animals can be approached without danger. Life-threatening predatory animals, including the belligerent rhinoceros that searches for food within the vegetation, would never attack an elephant. The animal kingdom at large can be observed with little risk. Animals make their way steadily and silently through the tall elephant grass of the subtropical jungle. Here, there are more than 10 different kinds of grasses that are commonly referred to as elephant grass. The elephant grass provides both food and shelter for a variety of animals. Side by side with the great Indian rhinoceros also live jackals, foxes, Indian bears and various varieties of stork. During the monsoon season that lasts from June until November, it is almost impossible to travel through the fertile grass-covered alluvial land. During the dry season, several rivers cross the plain and supply the park's animal kingdom with cool water. Our 
Elephants take the opportunity for a rest on the riverbank. They fill their long trunks with refreshing water and satisfy their seemingly unquenchable thirst. Along the banks live many ducks and water birds, including numerous birds of passage that travel here during winter and in summer return to the more northerly regions. It is a constant source of wonder with how much ease the large feet of these pachyderms lead us through the deep and slippery mud. A crocodile enjoys the warmth of the sun and is on the lookout for food. In this near impassable terrain that is a mixture of tall grass and knee-deep water, the elephant is the only realistic means of transport. We encounter an Indian rhinoceros. It is searching for fresh grass and leaves in the undergrowth. Its wrinkled hide looks like armor. Unfortunately, this unusual method of jungle exploration reaches its conclusion far too quickly. An extraordinary adventure on the back of an elephant. Pachyderms safely return their passengers to the starting point of the safari. An adventure that they will remember for a long time to come. Jungle drive by open jeep. Here also, safety is of the utmost importance. The local guides are highly trained and keen to ensure the safety of their guests. slow drive on bumpy natural roads travels past the tall trees of the jungle. From the top of the trees there is the screaming of monkeys as well as a confusing cacophony of bird calls.
park is a paradise for birds. Among the 450 species that live here, there are rare hornbills, cranes, peacocks and birds of prey, such as falcons, hawks and white-tailed eagles. The safari travellers take a short break at a river and explore the surroundings on foot. The sun slowly disappears beyond the treetops and covers the landscape with a mystical light. The day draws to an end. Dusk is the best time to observe the animals. As darkness falls, many of the jungle's inhabitants leave the protection of the forest and come to the river banks where they can be observed at close quarters. As the sun vanishes beyond the horizon, the temperature drops and a cool breeze blows gently along the riverbed. A welcome treat. The search for tracks has proved successful. There are clear prints in the soft sand. A short time ago, a tiger passed by on its search for food. The exciting journey continues and leads the group back through the dense forest that is becoming increasingly dark. Only a few beams of the setting sun make contact with the fertile ground of the forest. The air is full of the scent of orchids and other plants that grow here in abundance. Slowly, the jungle becomes silent. The animals prepare for their night's rest. Only predatory animals such as tigers, leopards and panthers begin to hunt when darkness closes in. The Jeep Safari comes to an end. The next day begins with an elephant briefing. The elephant leaders, known as Mahouts, explain the nature of these animals that have proven to be so useful to mankind. The Indian elephant is renowned for its excellent memory and its intelligence makes it a very versatile worker.
Its nose is located at the end of a long trunk that extends to the ground. This sensitive organ can handle food with great dexterity and, by way of its strong tusks, can lift heavy weights. The Indian elephant can grow up to three meters tall, seven meters long, and can weigh an incredible six tons. Ivory tusks, generally only fully develop in the males, grow up to 1.6 meters long and weigh 20 kilograms. Because of their gigantic dimensions, each day these vegetarians consume a huge quantity of food. The elephant's two to four centimeter thick skin is almost hairless and, in contrast to common belief, is extremely sensitive. Each side of its lower and upper jaws contains only one large molar tooth, along with a variety of scratches in the dental enamel. Their huge column-shaped legs contain an elastic support beneath the bones of each foot. Because of this, the elephant has a gentle and deft-like gait. They use the trunk just the way we use our hands. Each December, the elephant polo games take place. Ten minutes each side. On each elephant, there is a player and a mahout. For the observation of this region's wildlife, the elephant is indispensable. Even the quarrelsome rhinoceros has great respect for this gentle giant. They also take great care of their young. Following a gestation period of between 20 and 22 months, the young weigh in at around 100 kilograms and are weaned for two years. The elephant can live for up to 65 years. They live in herds in which individual families form a close union. At the top of their very sensitive two meter long trunks are the nostrils that serve both as a smelling and sucking organ. In contrast to the African elephant, the Indian has smaller ears and a vertical forehead. Because of their slow and gentle movements, these large, heavy animals emanate an air of calm tranquility. But 
the largest difference is the fact that the Indian elephant can be domesticated and thus be trained to be of practical help in those places that cannot easily be reached by machine. After an intensive period of training, only a few commands are enough for the animal to obey its master. At the end of each task, the animals are rewarded for their patience and obedience with a loving caress. Large rivers such as the Narayani, Reu and Rapti are ideal for an exciting and intriguing journey by canoe. travels silently across the murmuring water. Duck, ibis, heron, bitterns, storks and buzzards search the water for plants, frogs and fish. Huge birds also live on the riverbanks. The Indian stork and the Sunda Marabu are the largest representatives of their species. With a little good fortune, one can also observe the white-tailed eagle as it flies majestically over the water while searching for prey. Rare and fascinating animals also inhabit these rivers. The seven-meter-long Ganges gavial crocodile uses its long and narrow jaws to hunt for fish and frogs with ease. And the extremely shy Ganges dolphin a river dolphin with an elongated, tooth-filled jaw lives on fish and frogs in the muddy sections of the river. Even during the dry season, the large rivers contain a good supply of water. Owing to the strong currents, the river banks soon pass by. The light of the setting sun will only reflect on the river for a short time, as children make good use of the evening sun for a refreshing bath. Just as the sun disappears beneath the horizon, 
the impressive journey by long canoe reaches its conclusion. Back in the lodge, there is yet another surprise. The jungle dance features ancient dances that have been handed down from generation to generation. To the rhythm of jungle drums, these dances feature the ancient rituals of fighting, hunting, religion and nature. In addition, numerous legends that stem from the 2,000 year old history of the Nepalese are performed in these colourful dances. Because of their remoteness, some regions have developed their own unique language, traditions and culture. Nepal is the centre of Buddhism, although 90% of its inhabitants are of the Hindu faith. The dances also help to describe the history and customs of these people to the next generation. Rhythm of the music and the movements of the dancers are of what is to us an unfamiliar culture that has developed over thousands of years. The spectacle ends in the flickering light of a bonfire and the night soon comes alive with the diverse sounds of the jungle. The royal Chitwan is full of game, once the hunting ground of kings and noblemen. Today it is the most treasured nature reserve in Asia and a final refuge for numerous animals threatened by extinction. <laughs>